Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, I'm going to review what MKB HD didn't tell you about the Cybertruck. Now, let's start with the Tesla tire. The Tesla spare tire. First of all, yes, this is what MKB HD had to say. What you're probably noticing though is there's no spare tire, no spare wheel. If you do want one, you can buy one separately and tie it up in the trunk, but you don't get one by default. And here is exactly what he's referring to. As you can see, the price for the spare tire kit is $1,250, which is quite a bit, especially since most traditional cars come with a spare tire and wheel. That way you have a spare tire when you need it. Now, there is an alternative to using up your bed. And I expect there are going to be a lot of additional accessories that get announced as the Cybertruck actually enters mass production. And one of those is from this company. Now you might not be sure what this is, but what I want you to do is look closely at these bracket mounts right here. These bracket mounts are something special. They're an opportunity for you to actually mount the back tire, or spare tire that is, on the back of your Cybertruck along with in this case, a shovel or other tools which they've thrown on top of the vehicle. Now, this is not sponsored by this company. I just saw this, this was just announced, and, and nothing in this video is designed to bash MKBHD. If anything, maybe this is just new information that came out uh, since his video or other perspective. But this is a third-party equipment announced by Unplugged Performance, which I think is pretty awesome. But what else did MKBHD not tell you? We aptly heard that, yes, there are these pretty cool rail systems. There's also some bed lighting. You can see on the left and right, there's lots of lights and there's also this uh, sort of a latch system. So all sorts of latch points where you can tie things down with cables. And they include the bottle opener. But there are actually a whole host of other attachments, functions, and utilities that you can take advantage of with this kind of rail system. And I know about this rail system because this is inspired by none other than Mercedes L-Track. Mercedes L-Track is found in Sprinter vans, specifically the cargo editions. The L-Track is an incredible utility for Sprinter van owners and lets you do some amazing customization. We also know that Elon Musk has been a fan of the Sprinter van in the past, and I personally hope there will be cyber cargo trucks in the future and cyber passenger vans in the future, just like there are sprinters. That's really popular, well, passenger vans and cargo vans are really popular in Europe, but they're much less popular in America where the pickup truck reigns supreme. These L-Tracks are pretty amazing though in cargo vans. I know because I used to have a cargo van. One thing I absolutely love about these is this kind of customization. You can get drawers in there, cabinets in there. Now obviously in a Cybertruck, I don't expect in the long term you're gonna have any kind of standing cabinetry, but if you're putting equipment or boxes back there, you wanna be able to tie it down easily. This is a perfect way to do it. But also I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we actually get some kind of customized upfit boxes that might include drawers or chests that lock into those rails that are easily removable. So let's say you're a handy person, you're going to a job, oh, I need my electrical tool kits. And so you attach to the L-Tracks the container drawers that have your electrical equipment, or oh, now I'm going to plumbing, you swap them out at your garage. It makes the Cybertruck very functional. Now remember, this is actually called upfitting in the world of cargo vans. And I'm pretty sure Elon got some inspiration from Mercedes for this idea. And the endless possibilities here are actually already starting to show up on the Tesla website. Here are some examples. This is the Cybertruck Base Camp. It's quite frankly a tent that goes on the back of your Cybertruck. It is $2,975. Now it's worth noting the little window that is at the back of the Cybertruck, at the back of the Cybertruck bed, is a non-operational window. So unfortunately, you're not going to have the benefit of being able to turn on the heater inside the cabin of the Tesla to warm up what could be the cozy area in the back of your car right here in your base camped Tesla. Now, that might be okay, because it's still a pretty interesting way to go camping. It's certainly convenient and portable, because look at this. Base camp folds up into a package attached to your LRACs. 
Not only this though, take a look at some of the other accessories, a tailgate ramp. So in case you don't wanna step up that about two feet to get up into the bed, or you've got a wheelbarrow to push up there or whatever, you've got a ramp. And this ramp will conveniently store in the bottom portion of that cyber truck bed. That's right about here, which Mark has also showed us. And there's a little bit of a sub trunk, which is pretty cool to see. So a lot of EVs now have a sort of a sub trunk area. This one, no different. You can definitely fit duffel bag in there, probably a full carry-on bag. Here are various different attachment options and latches. My favorite is this right here, the Cybertruck Locker Divider. See, you could essentially buy three of these for $45 and then divide your pickup truck bed very easily into one, two, three, four different sections because what you would do is you would slide in one, two, three of these dividers, attach them to the L system, boom, done. Tools in one, sorted in the back. Maybe you've got water bottles and your lunch in the other, ready to go things up in the front and then just an empty one. Maybe you use it for trash or miscellaneous things throughout the day. It actually, in my opinion, makes the bed a lot more functional because rather than having a bunch of stuff rolling around in the bed all the time, you have everything compartmentalized. Now, another thing we heard is there might be fingerprints. And you can see the fingerprints go so hard when you open it like that. And because there's no door handles, there's, there's not really a good way of telling someone how to get in. So a lot of people are just gonna grab it right there and fingerprint, look at, it's just tons of fingerprints on the side here. And let's be real, it's stainless steel. So much like a stainless steel fridge, unless you pay extra for the fingerprint free version, which doesn't exist at least right now for a Tesla, you're gonna have some fingerprints on that Tesla. But don't worry, Tesla will sell you a $6,500 solution. Yes, you can wrap your Cybertruck in this vinyl film for $6,500 black. It actually looks really cool and it might be worth the extra. Personally though, I would like to take this to a print shop and get my company name on this film before they go install it. Probably something that you could work out can take a little bit more effort, but I think it'd be worth it for a branding point of view. Alternatively, Tesla will also sell you this, a satin white version. I know initially you might look at that and go, that don't look different. It's very different. It doesn't have fingerprints. And it's also a little bit more white rather than a reflective stainless steel color. This truck does not have a hazard button. It has a touch sensitive hazards thing, but then there's also your park, reverse, neutral, and drive gears, if you actually want to change them, up above your head. Uh, I've never seen it there in any car, ever, actually. Typically, it's right in front of you with the paddle shifters or your gear selectors, and you can still do it on the screen like you can in other Teslas, but that that's new. It's not as new as you might think. Now, you might think, yes, up top is new. Then it's true, but take a look inside the Tesla Model S Plaid, where we have, we're gonna have to get by my laptop stand, hold on a second. Now in the car, just over here by the center console, you can see they've got these touch buttons as well, which are almost never used. And a lot of people don't know that if you actually hold here, you can get that same row of buttons here for park, reverse, neutral, drive, but most people won't actually use these buttons. Most people are going to use this to go forward, backward, neutral, park. It's all on the center screen. Side view mirrors, um, they're removable and they've kind of done all that they possibly can to make it able to be removed. Like you can take this off. It has to ship with this from the factory legally. Um, but there is a blind spot monitoring lights inside the truck. There are cameras uh, here on the side of the truck to show you that spot when you put your blinker on. So you could just pop this off if you really wanted to. Now this part might be new for newer Tesla owners or people considering a Tesla, but the reality is that car is so good at knowing exactly what's around you. When that display pops up showing what's around you and you set your blinker, not only are you getting a display of what's around you via the camera feed, but 
you're getting the digital representation of what's around you. In addition to that, maybe I'm still a little traditional, but I don't like relying on my mirrors anyway. I was taught an old school method of look over your shoulder to verify anyway. And this is the first time a Tesla has actually included blind spot sensors. So if you got rid of the mirror, which remember you could keep the mirror, but if you got rid of the mirror, you would have blind spot sensor, cameras, 3D representation, and the good old crank of the neck. And then its downside uh, is gonna be one, just that people think it's ugly, and that's fine. A lot of people are gonna think it's ugly. Whoa, hold on a second. It might be ugly, but that is not a downside. That, in my opinion, is a feature. See, when something is a head turner, it's actually a form of marketing. See, I just put up on screen something that has a really good function for attracting people to look. And generally the first thing people see is, oh look, it's a real estate for sale sign. Must be a realtor. Exactly. That was the purpose. See, in 2013, I wrapped my Toyota Prius, which used to tow this solar-powered uh, trailer where I kept signs and tools in as a, a real estate broker to take care of my clients. And then in 2017, I got my Model X, which I've loved. Now my dad rides my Black X. Uh, and this right here is an example of trying to get essentially free marketing. You wrap to show legitimacy to your clients for your business or whatever it might be. But if something is colorful, attractive, or different, it makes people look and then when they see it over and over and over again, they start thinking, huh, that person's always working. Maybe if I need a realtor, I'll call them, which could be true for not just realtors, but insurance agents, CPAs, the supervisor or boss of a construction company, the contractor, the plumber, the electrician. It doesn't really matter what your small business is. If you want more eyeballs on your ads, you're not going to get them by wrapping a Sprinter van anymore. That's been done. Everybody has turned a blind eye to those. But a wrap on a Cybertruck? That is a feature, not a bug. And two is it's more expensive than we originally thought. It doesn't have that price advantage. I am driving a $100,000 truck right now. There's no way around that. The F-150 Lightning I'm following right now is gonna cost significantly less. On top of that, we have the suggestion that Marquez is in a $100,000 vehicle. But wait a minute. That Ford Lightning you might be comparing to, and we don't know exactly which model he's comparing to, isn't necessarily an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. The lowest-tier rear-wheel drive Cybertruck with a similar 250-mile range is $60,990, much more similar to this Lightning Pro. Yes, the highest tier of the uh, Cybertruck is $100,000, but the lowest tier of the Cybertruck is $59,900. So wait a minute, $59,900 is starting to get a lot closer to the equivalent, well roughly equivalent range and priced 2023 F-150 Lightning Pro. In fact, here is some existing inventory of these Lightning Pros, and you can see once you actually start getting matches here, you're usually sitting around fifty-eight dollars to $60,000, which is exactly the same price as the lowest cost Cybertruck. Now, there are more expensive versions of the Lightning and, of course, the Hummer and Rivian, just like Mark has mentioned, but it's worth remembering when we're comparing apples to apples, the lowest price Cybertruck and the lowest price Lightning are roughly matched. But in fairness, the lowest cost Cybertruck is not yet available. On top of that, when Marquez talks about the battery, extended range battery that can be installed. So there will be an optional battery, uh, an add-on battery that you put in the trunk that adds 120 miles of range. It also adds a ton of weight because now you're hauling around a huge battery. But now you have close to a 400, 450 mile range truck. It's worth remembering you're going to have to pay to install that battery system at a Tesla service center. So it's not something you could just plug and play with as you'd like. 
Now, of course, many of us know that at the moment, electric vehicles often have a $7,500 tax credit, but that can be limited by income or price of vehicle. But one thing that is cool, which Marquez didn't talk about either, is that delicious 179 deduction. Now, talk to your CPA about this, but usually when you buy a vehicle for business purposes, usually within your corporation, which could be the S corporation that you as a self-employed person have, Usually what you do is you accelerate the depreciation of this vehicle, which means generally you could take about a 25% set of bonus depreciation on a passenger vehicle. So for example, if you have a $100,000 vehicle, you might be able to write off $25,000 of that year one plus the rest over, say, 10 years to make math simple, which would be 75,000 divided by 10, so there'd be another $7,500. You might be able to take somewhere around a $32,500 deduction or more, especially if you depreciate it quicker, which is pretty cool. Now, again, talk to your CPA about this, but if you write off $32,500, and let's say your marginal tax rate, I know it's getting a little complicated, is 50%, your tax savings might be somewhere around $16,250. Now, what's cool about that is you're probably going to put less than $16,250 down on this car if you finance it, which means you're actually getting cash buying a Cybertruck. Make sure to subscribe for more perspective like this. And if you want to learn everything I know about actually building wealth with real estate, investing, stocks, finance, taxes, Go check out meetkevin.com. Not only am I a licensed real estate agent, broker, I've been a licensed lender, licensed contractor, becoming a stockbroker, passed over six different series tests. I know a thing or two about entrepreneurship. So go check it out at meetkevin.com. Let me help you out as well. Why not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take.